What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. So before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to Aram for his contribution to the channel. All right. Much respect to Aram for contributing to the channel. Freaky contributor and a uh, big time supporter of uh, the basketball content on here. I think anybody and everybody that supports this channel, if you want to show love to this channel, you can do so in the links. In the description box below via the PayPal or the Cash App if you choose to. You know what I'm saying? Also, I think everybody that signed up to the Patreon. So I want to talk about last night's game. Bucks versus Nets, okay? The final score, 124 to 118. Milwaukee was able to hold off Brooklyn for the second time in about a week. I think less than a week, actually. And um, it's a big victory, a morale victory, I guess, for the Milwaukee Bucks. It's one of those games, I guess, where you kind of see where you are, you know what I'm saying? And um, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving both scored 30 points, at least 30 points. I uh, can't remember exactly how many points each one of them had. And... In the second half of this game, if you were watching it, it looked like the Nets were slowly about to take over this game. You know what I'm saying? It was sometime around the beginning of the fourth quarter, if you were watching the game, you thought, okay, Nets are going to take over. But for once... You know, Milwaukee, I guess Coach Boonholder, they made some adjustments. Now, instead of trading three for threes, they started cutting to the basket, in particular Chris Middleton. Uh, they went to Giannis a lot more. Uh, you know, they crashed the boards uh, to get second shot opportunities. The Nets, as awesome as they are with their three stars of uh of uh, Kyrie Irving, uh, Kevin Durant, and James Harden, who is MIA right now. Mm. As awesome as their top three stars are, in the paint, rim protection, rebound, they have issues. Serious issues. And that's when they, start, they decided, uh, Milwaukee decided to attack them. It was very successful. It helped to stave off the coming next charge. Uh, you know, in addition, Kevin Durant, especially him, but others, they began to miss. You know what I'm saying? They began to miss fire. Um, Giannis did not have an efficient night. He scored like 36 or 37 points and 12 or 13 rebounds, but he only shot something like 11 of 30 from the floor, something like that. I mean, 11 of 31. He was not efficient at all. But it didn't matter because Drew Holiday had a great game. And in my opinion, even though Kevin, uh, Kyrie Irving still had 30 some points, I thought Drew Holiday did a really good job containing Kyrie. I think if anybody else was guarding Kyrie Irving tonight, I think he would have had a 40 piece. And I think that uh, the Nets probably would have won. So you did see the value of Drew Holiday tonight. And Drew Holiday himself scored 20. I can't remember the exact totals. You know, it was 20-something. But he had a really good game. Chris Milton was thinking it up until, I think, the fourth quarter or so. You know what I'm saying? Where I think he went something like 6 for 6 and scored uh, 14 points or something like that. Uh, but he was thinking it up until the last quarter. And that's what's going to have to happen. You can't always expect Giannis to put up 40, 45, 50 points. Um, he's going to have off shooting nights. What happens to everybody? Other guys are going to have to step up. You know, um, the thing about the Nets that concern me are two things. Number one, without James Harden, their offense is not as free flowing. And it looks a little stagnant at times. 
it can become a it can, it, it can become and it's ironic because everybody always accused James Harden when he was in Houston and it's the truth of being the ultimate ball stopper but with Brooklyn the offense was so much more crisp with him being all, their best facilitator and he was basically their point guard and you know it was also kind of unpredictable because you know he could he has very good court vision. He can just pass it and swing it either way. You know what I'm saying? Um, without him, they're still a great team offensively, but they're more ISO heavy. Durant and Kyrie Irving. So they lose that other element. You know what I'm saying? But the thing that alarms me the most, and I know. A lot of people don't like analytics, but this has to be stated. The Brooklyn Nets rank 26th out of 30 teams in defensive rate. Um, I'm just telling you this from a historical standpoint. I cannot think of any team since this has been a statistic which I think goes back to the 50s, right? Defensive rating. Or where it can be measured. I don't think that there's been any team to ever win a championship that hasn't at least been middle of the pack defensively. See, if you're like a, bit, a middling team defensively, that's good enough as long as you have a great offense. And if you're not a great offensive team, if you're a top-tier defense, then that's enough to get by. As the case with the Pistons in the mid-2000s. They were not a great offensive team, but their defense was number one, number two in the NBA, along with the Spurs. But a team that is, is this porous defensively, I cannot think of one. Look, the Lakers last year, I think they were a top five or top six in defensive rating. 2019 Raptors were like top four or five defensive rating. Um, the 2018 Warriors, I think, were top 11. I think they were like top 15. But that was good enough considering how great they were offensively. 2017 Warriors, they were better defensively. I think top five. 2016 Cavaliers were top 10 defensively, I believe. 2015 Warriors were the number one defensive rating team in the NBA as far as defensive rating. The Spurs were very high. You get where I'm going with this. Miami, when they were winning, they were usually a top 10 defense, sometimes higher in certain years. You know what I'm saying? The, the Kobe's Lakers, they were like top 10 usually, maybe top five some years. Uh, the big three in Boston, they were top five. Um, and I'm going all the way back to, you know, uh, I think the Miami Heat in 2006 were like 15th or 14th. They were still in the middle of the pack defensively, but that was enough for them to win a title, okay? Plus, they, Wade had a, a phenomenal series. So you want to say he had help from the officials. Official, that's another thing. Those San Antonio teams always top. Uh, five in their prime defensively, okay? Kobe, Shaq, Lakers. Now, in 2002, their last title run, they were 12th in defensive rate. I think that's the lowest they, I think that's the lowest they rated um, as far as that statistic. The Bulls were usually always top 10, sometimes top five, sometimes higher than that. Um, I think in 1996, they were number one in defensive rate. So you get what I'm going with this. Even the Showtime Lakers, even though they're not noted as a defensive team, and defensive rate, they usually were in the top 10. Boston Celtics, Bird, always hot. So for a team like the Nets to be 26, I cannot think of a team that's been anywhere near that. Matter of fact, I can't even think of a team that's even made it to the finals with a rating, a defensive rating that low. Now, I get 
they are a, a, a special case because of the awesome talents that they have on their roster. But I do wonder about that lack of defense catching up with them in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I do love that song that you hear him play. Look, you pick up the da 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 da. You ever seen Fight Club? Yeah. Where is my mind? Not on this video. Um, but yeah, those are my main concerns about this next team, man. Um, they're, I'm not saying they're in trouble, man, nothing like that, but, you know, but it, it, it does, you know, I just say this, they look better when it's Harden and Irving. Um, now, look, they lost on Marcus Aldridge, you know what I'm saying, so that's a blow, but, you know, I, I just, I don't want to sound the alarms, but there are certain things that concern me about this team a little bit, you know what I'm saying, there are some things that concern me about them, and you you hope that they don't fall prey to what hurt the Clippers last year, where they started believing their own press clippings and thinking they were invincible and they can just get by on talent alone. And, you know, hopefully I don't think that they'll fall victim to that, but we'll see, man. Tell me what you guys think.